Today, I want to tell you about a really strange trick that's used within a huge number of Zelda songs, from Ocarina of Time to Twilight Princess and even more. You almost certainly never noticed it before, but once I point it out, you'll never be able to unhear it. Let me tell you about the secret hidden within Zelda's music. It all begins around 1995. Shigeru Miyamoto had started working on his new project, the 3D Zelda game which would eventually become Ocarina of Time. This new game would be unlike the flat Zeldas from before. It would be immersive and atmospheric, and that went for the music too. Miyamoto told longtime series composer Koji Kondo, What I'd like you to do is to create a totally realistic atmosphere. For example, if you went to a dungeon, you could almost smell it. But that was easier said than done. Truth be told, Kondo was a little stuck. How on earth was he meant to create this new atmospheric sound? He asked some of the other developers working on the team for advice, but they were mostly younger than Kondo, and so felt too intimidated to give him any real suggestions. So out of ideas and without a clue of where to go from here, Kondo left his office at Nintendo to go for a stroll around the local city of Kyoto. Perhaps something there would catch his imagination. And that's when he saw something that turned his plans upside down. A small shop nestled away in amongst a hundred similar looking stores suddenly grabbed his attention. It looked like some kind of music store. For some reason, and Kondo himself wasn't exactly sure what it was, he decided to go inside and take a look. But what he found surprised him. The shop had CDs from all over the world. Jazz, funk, pop, disco. This little music store had it all. And tucked away in the corner, there was a section of sample CDs. These CDs contained tons of short 10 second loops. There were ethnic sounding flutes, bongos, and even chanting. The shop had a listening station, so Kondo could listen to it all right there inside the store. He later wrote, I've been able to hear tons of things I've never heard before. I go there a lot. And so Kondo grabbed a stack of these sample CDs, checked out, and returned to his office at Nintendo. Right, now it was time to return to the task at hand, this new Zelda soundtrack. Before, he'd been stuck for how to write something unique, original, and above all, atmospheric. But his visit to the music store had given him a big idea. Rather than writing the songs from scratch, he could use pre-existing loops and samples to give the music an original sound. And so I figured it might be fun to compare some of these original samples to the final tracks from Ocarina of Time, plus a few other Zelda games too, which used the same technique. Little did I know, tracking down some of these CDs would be a huge pain in the arse. Most of them were produced over 30 years ago. I even emailed one of the companies who created these CDs, and they were like, yeah, no, we haven't produced the CD for decades, you definitely cannot buy it in the year 2020. But eventually, through the use of some slightly dodgy looking websites, I managed to track down a handful of the original CDs that Kondo bought back in 1995. I loaded them up on my computer with the help of some super old and clunky looking software. But look, it's all here. All the sounds that Kondo bought all the way back in 1995. And so finally, we can compare Kondo's music to its original source. Let's go. First is the Great Deku Tree. It's the very first temple you experience in Ocarina of Time. And it has this nice, ethereal, almost otherworldly music in the background. Now, Kondo's original sample for this one was from a CD called Distorted Reality. You might not recognize the original sample if I play it normally. See, sounds completely undeku-like. But listen to what happens when I slow it way down. 
See, now you can hear it in the Deku Tree music, right? But there are actually much more obvious examples from the game's soundtrack. Like the iconic Forest Temple theme, for example. It's so instantly recognisable, especially the part with this sort of fluty, echoey rhythm. Well, let me play you a sample from another Kondo CD, this time called just Ethnic. <laughs> Those flutes should be sounding extremely familiar, right? Here's where they show up in the Forest Temple theme once more. But that's by no means all. Another slightly more subtle example is hidden within the music for Jabu Jabu's Belly. Later on in the song, there's this kind of percussive thunk that plays a few times. Well, from the album A Poke in the Ear with a Sharp Stick, great name, here's the original sample. Or take the Shadow Temple theme. It has these drums running throughout the background of the tune. Take a listen. And those drums are from a CD called Ethnic Flavours. Here's the original sample. But by far the best example has got to be from the Fire Temple. This song is infamous because in the original version of the track, it featured an Islamic call to prayer. In later versions of the game, it was replaced with a similar sounding synthesizer because Nintendo do not like including religious references in their games. But here's something really interesting. That original call to prayer sound, that too came from a sample CD that Koji Kondo bought in that little music store in Kyoto. The CD is called Voice Spectral Volume 1 by a company called Best Service. And on track 76, we hear the following sound. But Kondo didn't stop at Ocarina of Time's soundtrack. Only a few years later, Nintendo developed the sequel, Majora's Mask, and Kondo made use of his sample CDs there too. In fact, this game has some even more in-your-face examples. Like in the Woodfall Temple, there's this ethnic sounding vocal call. And that too was lifted right off Kondo's old favourite, Ethnic Flavours. But the best example comes not inside the dungeons, but instead in the overworld. Majora's Mask is famous for its three day repeating cycle. The music for each day gradually grows more and more frantic, until at the end of the third day we watch as the moon crashes into Termina. And the music for this part of the game is suitably sombre, it's great. But check this out, the basis for the final hours piece of music comes from that very first CD, Distorted Reality. There's a track there called Iceland, and just take a listen. Now, Majora's Mask was the last Zelda game that Kondo wrote the soundtrack for on his own. But his influence can be seen in every game following it, and this extends to the music sampling technique too. Like Take Twilight Princess, where Link transforms into a wolf. This song, which plays while you're in wolf form, is a sort of hodgepodge of a number of samples from different CDs once more. There's this orchestra hit sound from the CD Gigapack.
Then there's an upbeat folk music like loop from a CD called New World Order. And then finally, serving as the bass for the whole track, there's a sample from one of Koji Kondo's original CDs. From Distorted Reality, here's the sample Solia. So all of this is pretty incredible to me. I mean, we get a look behind the scenes at some of these songs in a way we never normally could. But I think the coolest part is this. The whole thing started purely by chance. Koji Kondo just happened to encounter that one store on that one day in Kyoto. If he had chosen a different street to walk down, then none of this would have happened. Zelda's music would have had a completely different sound to it. But because of that store he noticed and the CDs he bought, Ocarina of Time was given a unique atmosphere, and this had a lasting influence on the Zelda series up until this very day. I wonder what Kondo would have thought back in 1995 if he told him all of that. Hey, this video was made possible by my amazing patrons, some of whom are appearing on screen right now. If you want updates on the channel and stuff, you can follow me on Twitter at ThomasGDocs and uh, subscribe for more videos like this if you want. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye!